Good morning, let's begin page 349, glory to his name, 349. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 349, down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name. This is our fellowship song, let's fellowship. on the second. I am so wondrously safe from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart the blood applied. Glory to his name on the last. Come to the 
this mountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul. Not bad, not bad, not good. You could do better. No, yes, you can. <laughs> the kids sang this morning in Sunday school, and it was fabulous. It was good. It was good. They're, they're gifted. Happy October. How many days till Christmas? Not enough. Are you serious? <laughs> How many have your Christmas shopping done? I mean, we might as well start. I already have my Christmas tree up. You do? Yes, so do, is it Walmart? Somebody's got all their Christmas stuff out. Yeah. That That's a sin. That's a sin. Let's pray. We're going to pray. Ready? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, help us today to worship you. Help us to love you, to serve you, but help us to be thrilled about you. Help us to see what you are, what you can do, and what we need, and just make it so clear to us, Lord, that we just need to do our best. Help us. But thank you that when we got saved, as Jesus said, he that heareth my word and believeth on uh, him that sent me half everlasting life. Thank you that to be saved, we just need to come to Jesus and, and hear what he says and, and believe him. And Lord, I, I'm just grateful that you would save me. Thank you for that. Bless this day, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Page 342 in a moment. John's going to come up here first. I'm told that uh, today or close to today is the anniversary of pastors many, 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 many years here. How, how much? Forty some, is it? Fifty. Ah. Goes fast, doesn't it? Goes fast. So Amy, if you would come up, because they're a team. Yeah. They are a team. I don't think we need to even ask that question. <laughs> Ow. Just a little something to say. We, we love wow. you. We do appreciate what you go through. And if you weren't called, you could not do what you do. Right. That's right. We need to remember that. Thank you. Amen, brother. Thank you. Right? 36? You really didn't know how many years? I thought it was a whole, seems like a whole lot more than that. Should I open this now? It's up to you. It's 36 years. We've been here. They voted. So, we came July of 87 and filled the pulpit. The first Sunday in October, they asked us to stay and vote. It was a unanimous vote. <laughs> Four people, literally. So some of you want to re-vote, we'll do that. It says, Amy is such a blessing. It says, you are such a blessing. 
Dear Pastor and Amy, making sacrifices big and small, giving willingly, going all out, putting others first, that's just you serving God being you, and it really makes a difference. Happy church anniversary. May the Lord bless you with many blessings and years together to serve him. Your church family at Lakeside in a check. Thank you very much. Thank that, you. We're honored. All right, page 342 in your hymnals, Kneel at the Cross, page 342. Kneel at the cross, Christ will meet you there. Come while he waits for you. Listen to his voice, be with him your care, and begin life anew. need that. If you have a bulletin, we need to, need to make a couple of adjustments. There is no choir tonight. It says choir. There is no choir practice. You don't need it. Well, <laughs> would you jot down a prayer request? Would you pray? Some of you know Mike. Mike's Sister-in-law, Edith, her daughter, Sherry, and Rose. Rose is not here. Edith is in bad shape in the hospital. And did you say it's from diabetes? That, that happened to Cheryl Flatt. Man, diabetes just is brutal. So you, her name is Edith. Just pray really hard for Edith. See who's back there? The worst neighbor you've ever had, he said. Larry McFarlane. Larry, we're praying for you, man. Keep going. He's in church. Look, he struggles. He's in church. Amen. Man, praise the Lord for that. I I'm just glad you're here. Thank you for coming. If you're visiting, thank you for visiting. If you always come, we appreciate you. If, if you weren't here, I wouldn't be here. Wait, if I wasn't here, you wouldn't be? Ushers are coming. There is Wednesday, Lord willing, we'll be here. October the 15th, two weeks from today, there is a carrying dinner for the singles. If you're a single and would like to be involved in that, see Lisa Sisk, and uh, she'll give you, if you need details, that's after the morning service, carry in for the singles. Ready to pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are, what you do. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you live in us. Help us to grasp that. Help us to get that, what that means and how powerful that is. God, speak to us. Speak to these kids as they go off to junior church, primary church. Speak to them. Challenge them. Lord, thank you for 
Your goodness, I thank you for all these years. I thank you that, as John said, if I wasn't called, there just wouldn't be any point to it. And, and I wouldn't be here. But, Lord, it, it's your calling. So I'm, I want to be your servant. I want to serve you. I, I want to do it not as unto man. I don't want to do it as I serve us. I want to do it as unto you, for you, because of you. Help me to do that and keep doing that. I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you, choir. Page 343 in your hymnals, At the Cross, page 343. Let's all stand, shall we? On the first verse, Junior Church, you may be dismissed. seated. A men's trio is coming to sing. Jesus is precious. 
us to me. It's worth coming just for that. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. First Samuel, first Samuel 17. I know, I know. If you've been here a while, you know this is one of my favorite stories. But I saw something. And that's what's great about the Bible is you think you see what you're supposed to see, and then God shows you more. And if you obey the light you have, of course, he gives you more light. First Samuel, First Samuel, the seventeenth chapter. Of course, we call it the David and Goliath chapter. I do, I do. First Samuel, First Samuel, seventeen. Find that we're not going to read so much verses in succession, but I want to skip around I want you to see a word a word there's a word that pops out first Samuel the 17th chapter you can find verse 28 we'll start there I'm going to help you through this because you know this story so well I don't want it to be oh it's that again because you and I know that God can take a scripture you've read often and use it in your life. So let him do that today. He can do that. 1 Samuel 17, verse 28. It says, And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. What did he speak? What did David say? He said, What's going on? There's no battle. There's a guy down there, but no one's, no one's taking him out. He's bad-mouthing God. So Eliab, his oldest brother, who, by the way, probably was still upset that, that he wasn't king. Remember when Samuel came to their house, 1 Samuel 16, and Eliab was the first, and Samuel even said, Looks like the king to me. And the Lord said, no. I mean, everybody else didn't say no. The Lord said no. So he's been rejected by the Lord. And remember, we use that, we quote that verse, God doesn't look on the outward appearance. He looks on the heart. And so Eliab, I don't think Eliab ever got over that. It says now, verse 28, Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? Why did David go? Because his dad told him to go. He was being obedient to his father. He said, And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride. I don't know where the verse is, but it's somewhere. It takes one to know one. Eliab says, I know thy pride. It takes one to know one. Eliab was the one with the pride problem. He said, I know to his brother David, I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. That's quite a judgment, is it not? I know why you're here. I know what you're doing. I know your trick. I know your game. Hey, don't let people discourage you if they talk that way. You just be right. You just be right. You just know in your heart you're humble. You know there's no naughtiness. He said, for thou art come down, verse 29, that thou mightest see the battle. Verse 29. And David said, what a great answer. Basically, verse 29 is saying, I haven't done anything. 
I'm just looking, just asking questions, just wondering what's going on. And notice he makes this phrase. He says this phrase, is there not a cause? I was curious about the word cause. It's the Hebrew word for business. Business. Armies are supposed to fight. David is saying to them, you are not doing your business. Is there not a cause? Is there not business to be done? Verse 30. It says, and he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. So he's looking at them. He's challenging them to do what they're supposed to do. Verse 31. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said, verse 32, we're going to read on just a little bit. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Think how silly that sounded to Saul. Saul's like, Saul had been watching. He had been hearing Goliath, this over nine foot uh, man of war. You've got little David, a shepherd boy. Think how silly it seemed to, to Saul when David said, I'll go fight. Saul's thinking, no, you'll get slaughtered. So he said, thy servant, verse 32, thy servant will go and fight with his Philistine. And Saul said to David, what you would say, what I would say if we're looking at David. Thou art not able, verse 33, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war. From his youth. Hey, listen, don't miss it. You know this. Don't miss it. David knew something. I mean, he's, he's not just popping off. I mean, I've got this picture in my mind. Remember, I don't know what side you were on, but remember when you were swinging at someone and they'd put their hand on your head and hold you back and you were hitting air? I mean, that's the picture I'm getting. Oh, Goliath with his big old, his big old mitt, his big old hand, his big old paw on, on David's head, and, and David's swinging away, and he's not hit them. That's what Saul saw. I'm sure Goliath is not threatened. David said, verse 34. Thy servant kept his father's sheep. Saul is not impressed. Hey? Nothing against shepherds, nothing against sheep herders. Saul is not impressed. He said, thy servant, notice he calls himself a servant, willing to do God's business, willing to do what needs to be done. He said, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear. And took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. I don't know about you. I'm very gullible. I would never believe that story if it wasn't in the Bible. Can you see Saul looking at David as he's telling this story? Can you see him scan him up and down? Oh, really? You, you killed the lion. Is that right? Right. And a bear. What does a lion? A bear can, And you killed the bear. See Saul's eyes looking at David? So you killed this bear with your hand. What did David say? That's right. There's no way, there's no way you or I'd ever believe that story if it wasn't in the scriptures. There's no way. 
thy servant. He, he, David reiterates his point. Verse 36, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. Can you hear Saul? Really? Wait, tell me again. How big was the lion? Was he stuffed? Do you have batteries? I mean, yet we're talking about the lion. We're talking about roar. We're talking about, you know, the, have you seen the paws on the lion? The teeth. They open their mouths so wide, man, they're fast. But now let Saul, let David, wait. You're sure? Just one to dream. And, and a bear. Little bear. Stuffed bear. Chicago bear. No, no, it's real. No, I killed them both. Verse 36, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Verse 37, and David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw, note the word paw. The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the, see it again, paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the, hand or paw of this Philistine. Now, take a, just a little breath break. David knows his business. David doesn't worry about whether or not it can be done. He knows what needs to be done. And he relies on the Lord to get it done. Remember he said in verse 29, is there not business? Is there not a call? You and I don't have to worry about how it's going to get done. We just need to know what are we supposed to do. 36 years ago, six months after I got here, two of the four people that were here that voted me in left. I'll never forget that story. I don't want you to forget it. It wasn't about how would I do it. It was about what's my business. What's my business? Is there not a cause? David says in verse 37, the Lord that delivered me. I mean, we're looking at him. Runt, scrawny, Saul's eyeing him up and down. That's impossible. What? That's the most bizarre story I've ever seen. I've, I've ever heard. I, how do you picture what David did? Can you see little David grabbing this lion? He punched him in the face. I mean, you better punch him right the first time. You try it. I mean, it's just, it's impossible. But David said, when I was with the sheep, watch now, that was my cause. That was my business. My business was to watch those sheep. And part of watching those sheep was protecting those sheep. And if it meant that a snake or a lion or a bear or a cockroach tried to attack the sheep, I was going to take care of them. That's my business. And he didn't say, it was me. He said, no, that's my business. And the Lord, verse 37, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. I would have said teeth. Huh? Ever been bit? I got stung by a bee this summer. It's like, that, that was worse than falling off of a, a tall building. A bee. I can't imagine get, getting a, have you seen, I'm sorry, I have this addiction. I love these guys that risk their lives to kill alligators. I mean, I keep watching thinking, one of these shows, one of them's going to get killed. That's why I'm watching. I mean, I don't want them to kill the alligator. I want the alligator to win one of these matches. They never do, and if they did, they wouldn't show it. Can you imagine getting clamped on by an alligator? 
David knew his business. His fear was not the jaw of the bear. His fear was not the jaw of the lion. His fear was the paw. He said he delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear. Look at verse 37. And he will. Don't you want that kind of faith? He will. What is David thinking when he's, when he's fighting? I mean, what do you say to a lion? Bring it. What do you say to a bear? I mean, isn't even the lion thinking, why wouldn't you give one of these up? Gee, you mean I can't have one? Why, why would you risk your life? Why would you attack me because I'm eating lamb chops? So David kills the lion and the bear. So now David tells us, verse 37, that his business, the cause, is that the Lord will deliver him out of the hand, not out of the sword, not out of the spear, not out of the shield bearer, not out of the, the pocket knife, not out of the potato peeler. He says, he will deliver me out of the hand. Verse 37 of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go. I think it was a sarcastic go. I think it was like, man, if, you, if you're dumb enough to fight a lion and a bear, you go for it. So he tells him, go. And then he finishes and says, and the Lord be with thee. And David said, he is. Verse 40, jump, let, let's jump around a minute. Watch this now, watch, watch the words. Here we go, ready? Verse 40, he took his staff and his, God, look, don't, don't, this isn't just a book, hey? This isn't just a book, this is God's book. He has a reason for every word he puts in there. He didn't give us thoughts, he gave us his word. Do you see the word in verse 40? He took his staff. If he took his staff, do you know how he took it? Do you think he picked it up with his feet? God wants us to know he took it in his hand. You know how God delivers you out of the hand of the enemy? Through your hand. That means you've got to be busy. That means you've got to offer him your hand. Verse 40. And chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip. And his sling was where? In his hand. Aren't you glad God's a God of detail? Aren't you glad when God sees things and thinks of things, he thinks of every detail. He doesn't miss the detail. I mean, he, he counts how many hairs you have on your head and the ones that were in the sink or the tub this morning. He keeps track of everything in your life. And verse 40 tells us that his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. Verse 46. He gets to the giant. He says these words. This day, today. In other words, he's saying in verse 46, this battle's over today. You're going down. You're going to die. You're going to die in front of all your teammates. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. It's just a hand. But if you give God your hand, he can use it. He wants to use our hands. Proverbs 31 tells us about the virtuous woman. Read it. Go through there. Look at all the times it uses the word hand. Our hands are important. God
God doesn't care about your brain. He cares about your hand. Let him use your hand. Verse 46, this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Did you see what he said? He said, not only are you going to die, all those guys up there laughing that are, that are on your side, they're dying too. Boy, you better watch what you say. Listen to me. Unless you know God can do it or God's going to do it, you better watch what you say. I don't think Goliath said, let's talk this over. I don't think Goliath said, man, I heard you killed a lion and a bear. I think Goliath by this time is very hot. Look at verse 49. And David put his hand. So you're making a big deal over words. Yeah, I am. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah, words are important. I'm saved. I'm saved. Uh, that God did that. I'm, I, I, I like that word. It's a Bible. I'm born again. That's a Bible word. God shows it. I didn't. Verse 49 came to pass. I'm sorry. And David put his, I was in the wrong verse. David put his hand in his bag, took that to stone, slang it. Oh, don't you love that word? He slang it. And smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. What? I, th look, I'm renting that video when I get to heaven. I want to see that. Verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword. Where? Where? In the hand of David. So what does David do? Verse 57. David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head. Remember David told Goliath, I'm taking your head from your body. And he did. Look at verse 57. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, which we thought was going to be the other way, and Saul thought it was going to be the other way too, we didn't think that David would slaughter uh, Goliath. We thought for sure Goliath would slaughter David. Verse 57. David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine. Was he carrying it with his feet? carrying it with his hand. Pray with me. Father, thank you for your word. I pray that my life, I need to be challenged. If nobody else is fine, challenge me. If, if you choose to challenge someone else, do that. If they allow you to show them the challenge, the business, then do that, please. Work, work now. Work, please, here, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Interesting word to me. God used David's hand to bring glory to himself. When Saul, Saul of Tarsus, the Apostle Paul, when he got converted, Acts 9, on the Damascus Road, he didn't say, where should I go? Who should I talk to? He said, what do you want me to do? Here's my hand. He was saying in so many words, here's my hand. God used David's hand to bring glory to him, and David used his hand to serve God. Let me tell you something you're not going to like, but it's true. I hope you get it because it's true. Giants are a part of the Christian life. I mean, you're, you had battles this week. You're going to have battles. Just give God your hand. He can take care of it. Don't say, what am I going to do? I'll tell you what you do. You give him your hand. 
If you try to figure it out, you'll fail. If you say, well, I'm going to ask so-and-so, I'm going to do, I'm going to, just, just give God, give, just put your hand in the bag, grab that lion by the beard, punch him with the other hand in the face. God can't do that. No, you can, but God can. But you've got to give him your hand. We, we hear the word, we heard the word before we were saved. They, they use the, the comparison of David versus Goliath, the giant against the, the loser. The giant's always favored to win. But David said, this giant, verse 29, this giant's in the wrong business. He picked the wrong crowd. David calls him uncircumcised. That means there's no blessing and, and no promise to him. God isn't with him. He is, he is a loser. He just didn't know it. You're in the Philistine army. You see this runt. Throw a stone. Hit your greatest man of war in the head. Knock him down. The Bible says David runs up on top of Goliath. He grabs Goliath's sword and he cuts Goliath's head off. Those guys are not running down the hill. Something happened when that happened. The army of Israel, who had been cowards up to this point, all of a sudden got courage. You realize, do you realize what an influence you can be on someone if you just give God your hand. I've got a lot of, I'm taking a list to heaven. I don't know what you're taking. I got a list of things I want to do, people I want to see, people I want to talk to. One of the people I want to talk to is Eliab. I want to say, hey, Mr. Eliab, what do you think? when your brother kills the giant. He may say, but it'll be heaven, so I don't know what he'll say, but he may say, no comment. Do you understand? You give God your hand and let him worry about the people that are trying to discourage you. I told you about the call. 35 years ago, the preacher that used to be here, still living in Angola, called me and said, young man, you need to leave that church. I didn't know how important Dr. J. Arnold Fair was. I found out later, but when he told me that, I didn't look at him, I didn't listen to him. Watch me, watch me. I, I'm not being literal, I'm just telling you what I did. I looked at my hand. He said, "You that, that, there's no, that church is done, dead. Sell it, it's in for a closure, I heard. Just let it go. I said, well, we had two people leave. He said, you only had four. I said, how'd you know that? He said, I know everything. I said, well, I'm just trusting God. He said, look, you're, you're a young man. I was 30, I thought that was young. You're a young man. You, you just need to move on. You just need to get away. That, that church is going to eat you up. That church is going to give you a bad taste in your mouth. You'll, you'll quit serving God if you stay there. <laughs> really? It's our hand. It's not our brain. What will thou have me to do? Some of our battles are against giants, but most of them are smaller than that. I think David's brothers were jealous. I don't think they were jealous. Well, I don't think they were jealous because he was going to be the next king. I think they were jealous because they didn't have the faith he had. Elijah told him, go home, man, go home. Why are you here? And David said, because there's business to be done. My business was to bring cheese. Dad told me to bring cheese, see how you're doing. You're not doing very well. And before I leave, I want to make sure we take care of this. Man, wouldn't you follow a guy like that? 
No wonder he was such a popular king. David decides that he didn't come for the battle. He was there to obey his father. And when he's watching the sheep and the lion and the bear came, he had what he needed to battle. What did he have? His hand. His faith. You don't need a bunch of a bunch of tools and weapons and, and this and that books. I need to know this. And somebody wrote this. Remember, Saul said, I, I tell you what you need. Remember what Saul said? You need my armor. So he sets his armor on David. David couldn't even walk. David said, I cannot fight like this. So he took him off. Can you imagine what Saul thought? What Eliab thought? What Goliath thought? When David walks out, he's in his little shepherd gown. He's got a little man purse. He doesn't have a sword. He doesn't have a spear. He's got a, he's got a piece of leather with shoestrings. My story, you'll be okay if you go my way. Don't worry about it. We're not that off from the scriptures. David has to get past the shield bearer. He has to throw a rock and hit Goliath. Everyone else, everyone else but David ran from this battle, ran away from this battle. David ran too. I love, I love what it says. Jump to verse 40. Oh. There's so much here. I'd love to read just all of this. David, verse 40, took his staff in his hand, chose him five smooth stones, put him in a shepherd's bag. When his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. You don't, you don't beat trouble by running away from it. You beat trouble by facing it. And God will give you everything you need. What, what, what is Goliath thinking when he sees David? Look at verse 48. It came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David. The closer you get to problems, the closer they'll get to you. And when those problems get close to you, you want to back up. Look at verse 48. That David, when, when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Don't you hate that? Don't you hate that courage? I mean, what a man. Jesus isn't impressed by your IQ. He's impressed by your faith. Two things, number one, simple things we've already talked about. Let's just spew them out again. Number one, you got to know your business. David knew his business. His business was to do what his dad told him to do. He went to take cheese and see how it was going. Well, it wasn't going very well. So what does he do? He, chew, he, he you know, think of the work that went, someone went through to build the spear and the sword. For Goliath. Extra large. I mean, supersize it. Right? It wasn't just a sword. When you're nine and a half foot tall, your sword better be a little bit longer or it'll look really stupid. Like a toothpick. So this someone had to build this huge sword, this huge spear. And all the, the armor that he wore. He didn't just go to Kohl's and get it off the rack. They had to make it especially for him. Some of you aren't keeping up, are you? Somebody had to make this. What does David do when he goes to battle? He reaches down, grabs five stones, and puts them in his bag. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. 
They're not swords. They're not spears. Like David, verse 29 tells us, our business is to stand up for the Lord and give him our hand. Not give him a hand, give him our hand. But let me tell you the problem, and I see it in me. And if I say it and it hits you, then it hits you. You know why we don't give God our hand? We're too full of ourselves. I, I can do that. I don't need God for that. This is a little part. I can do that. I don't worry about it. God, God, does. God helps those who help themselves. You never read that in the Bible. Quit quoting scripture that isn't there. Find the Bible. Find what God says. Trust, trust God. Don't trust your flesh. David was a nobody. And David was fine with that. And when you're a nobody, you have to trust somebody. Let me tell you my battle with this. And every day I'm praying over these verses. God doesn't want sacrifice. He wants a broken and a contrite heart. I'm in Lakeville. I mean, it used to be people would say, oh, yeah, I go through there. Now they don't even go through here. I mean, we're so bad, they ran a road around us. That's not the point. Amy told me about a dream she had last night. She had a dream that we moved to Chicago. I said, Chicago? Pick me, dream south. I don't want to move to Chicago. We lived in a really crummy house. Hey, we may. I don't pick the battles. I just fight. Hey, it's not up to me to pick the battles. David sits down and realizes all that God's done for him. David realizes as he contemplates that he's lived his life from his heart, not from his mouth. And he was willing. He was willing to do whatever the Lord wanted him to do because he was there to accomplish God's business. Say, oh, yeah, but wait a minute. Isn't David the one had all them wives, took off with that, that guy's wife and killed the guy? Did you ever make a mistake? Quit throwing stones. Did you ever kill a lion and a bear and a giant? Yeah, I thought so. Be quiet. Man, God can use us. Just don't get proud. Do God's business, number two. You got to know the business, but number two, you got to know the battle. I miss my sister. September 28th, my sister would have, would have turned 69 years old. I, I miss her. I was the last one with her before she passed. I was the last one she looked at and heard these words. I love you. Boy, that has taught me, be careful what you say. When we were kids, you would have thought I hated her. As I used to say, as maybe you still say, I whooped on her all the time. I broke her stuff. I dirty her room. I harassed her. But that's normal. I was normal. <laughs> David's battle was not with Eliab, his brother. Hey, don't you think David wanted to say, what you say? You know how, hey, a soft, a soft answer turns away wrath. You know how grievous words stir up anger. You need to go home. Make me. You realize that, I don't know if you know this, but Eliab knows it now. David could have took him. Because he gave his hands to God. And when Eliab was, was bad-mouthing David, David knew that his battle wasn't with his brother. Hey, 
I'm not going to be exactly what you want. I'm not going to be exactly like you think I should be. Your battle isn't with me. You're not exactly what I think you should be. But if you spend your time moaning and groaning and whining and murmuring, you're going to miss the battle. There's a battle. There, there's a battle that we're supposed to. We're not fighting each other. You know, sometimes here he goes along again. Why, why, why do you come then? I mean, if we're going to worry about the clock, if we're going to worry about things, if we're going to fight with each other, our battle isn't with Saul. David's battle wasn't with Saul. Our battle is with the enemies of God. Yeah, well, look, I have friends, good friends, that don't believe just like I believe. Do you think they're going to heaven? Why are you battling them? Because we're all there. I mean, you think heaven, we're all going to, is it going to be just one big Lakeside Baptist church? Some of us are going to be surprised. We're going to be surprised by who's there. This battle against Goliath wasn't personal for David. It was spiritual. All our battles, listen to me, all our battles are spiritual. Yeah, but they forget you. Don't please yourself. Don't think of yourself. David wasn't insulted by Goliath. God was. When David killed the lion and the bear, they weren't attacking him. They were attacking the sheep. Know your business. Know your battle. The Apostle Paul, the Saul of Tarsus, was killing Christians. Jesus stops him on the road to Damascus and says to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Remember what Saul said? Who art thou, Lord? He didn't even know who he was fighting. He was just in it. Satan will attack God through you. It isn't personal to us. It is spiritual. This church always had, as long as I'm here, this church belongs to God. I go to Vito's church. No, you don't. You need to quit that church. Go to God's church. This is God's church. I don't pay my, and it's even in my church. Come to my church. Come, come to my church. And you say that. Go to, go to my, come to our church. It's God's church. This church, this work belongs to God. We're just soldiers in his army. People, people are dying every day and going to hell because they don't know Jesus. And we're fussing. I don't like the color of the pews. Me neither. I mean, are we really going to make a big thing about that? I think the middle aisle is a bit wide. Really? I think the front pews are too, there's too much room up front. Oh, don't worry. Hey, we're going to a big fountain in here. So, you know, what, what does it matter? I didn't know we're here. Hey, l- listen to me. I'm I'm touching close to home, but I'm going to say. This this building burnt once. And if it burns again, we're still the church. Doesn't matter what we go through. Doesn't matter how it goes. Doesn't matter how sticky it gets. Doesn't matter. The, The enemy is trying. If he doesn't try to kill you, he'll try to distract. He wants you distracted. Don't let what the enemy does, don't let what the enemy says distract you. Know your business. Hey, simplify your life. What's going to matter when you're dead? So I've made more money this year. Stop. What's going to matter when you're dead? Think there's going to be big bags of cash? 
God's going to say, whose cast is that? That's mine. But if there's people there that got saved because of you, who, whose are they? They're mine. Good for you. Good for you. You're going to take money to heaven, and God's going to say, we walk on that here. You're going to brag about some position or great big house. I don't know if you know this, but when you get raptured, your house isn't going with you. Your clothes aren't going with you. Your toys aren't going with you. When you're raptured, you're going naked. Nothing goes with you. You came naked, you're leaving naked. Rapture or death. You, you, l- listen now. God needs, God needs, he's chosen to need our hand. I just want to give God my hand. God, what do you want? How can you use me? What do you want me to do with my hand? Make your business clear to me and help me to battle what I'm supposed to battle. Sometimes it'll be a battle. Think of what David killing Goliath did for the army of Israel. One guy went to battle. Somebody came. This is what I want to ask Goliath. Somebody came to Eliab and said, is that your brother? What would Eliab say? Not anymore. Hey, here's Eliab. They said to him, wasn't that your brother killed that giant? It sure was. It sure was my favorite brother. <laughs> Listen to me. We're, we're all together in this. If one of you gets a victory, we all get the victory. If one of us suffers, we all suffer. If one of us has joy, we all have joy. We're in this is Lakeside Baptist Church. We're a family. We're in this together. The, the battle, the battle is Ours. David went to battle because nobody else would claim the battle. But boy, they claimed the victory. Right? Pray with me. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Father, I pray that you'll take what we've read, especially the Word of God. Man, the Word of God is so potent. Use our hands, Lord. For these 36 years, I've just tried to give you my hands. Use my hands, Lord. Help me to use my hands to fight the right battles. Help me to use my hands to do the business of God. Not my business. Not even the church's business. The business of God. What does God want? What will bring glory to God? If I do this with my hands, will it bring glory to God? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Are you listening? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Are you listening? Will what you're doing with your hands bring glory to God? The business that you're in, is that bringing glory to God? The way you use your hands. See, you're supposed to even do your job, not unto men, but as unto the Lord. Are you doing that? That's your business. Use your hands to fight God's battles. Use your hands to bring glory and honor to God. You say, preacher, I'm here today. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven when I die. I didn't know you can know. You can know. I know it. There are a bunch of people in this room, if you ask them, if you died today, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? A whole bunch of people in this room would say, yes, absolutely. If you're here today, your head is bowed, your eyes are closed. If you're here today and you're not sure you're going to heaven, you can be. You can be. Greatest decision I ever made. I trusted Christ. I got saved. I know for sure I'm going to heaven. He'll never take it away. I'll never lose it. You say, preacher, I'm not sure of that. I'm not sure of that. If I died today, I can't say I know I'm going to heaven. Well, could I pray for you? Would you just let me pray for you? 
I won't point you out. You just slip your hand and say, hey, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I would like to be sure. Would you pray for me? I'll just say, yes, thank you. I won't call you out. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Preacher, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I'd like to know for sure I'm going to heaven. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? Here, here's my hand. Slip it up so I can see it. Preacher, pray for me. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I would like to know. I would like to leave here knowing I'm going to heaven. I've never done that. I'm not sure of that. You can be sure. You can be sure. David was so sure that God would give him the victory. Isn't that great? Say, preacher, I want to use my hands for God's business to fight God's battle. I want to use my hands for whatever God wants me to use them for. I want to make sure that everything I do, the Bible says whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That, that, that is not a cheap verse. I mean, did you hear what that verse said? Is that true in my life? Is that true in your life? Everything that we're doing with our hands, is it to the glory of God? Does it make God look better? Preacher, will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? I want to use my hands the way I should. Here's my, here's my hand. Lift it high. I want to use my hands like I should. I want to use my hands for God. Up and down. Up and down. Pre come on. Come on. Preach. I want to use my hands for God. I want to use my hands for God. Father, we thank you. I pray that decisions will be made. Not just a decision to raise a hand. But a decision to go as far as we need to go to make sure. We give you our hand, do your business, fight your battles. Help us, Jesus, help us. I pray in your name. You're, you're standing, piano's playing. You're standing. Here's what, here's what we do. You're standing, she's playing. You just come to the altar and you say, God, I, I want this to be a, a done deal. I'm giving you my hand. My hands are yours. And, and whether they were yesterday doesn't matter. Today, I want to make sure that they are yours. I want to give them to you. You tell me what to do. You show me what to do. You help me to make sure that the business that I do, the cause is there not a cause, David said. When they said, we're not fighting that giant. David said, is there not a cause? Isn't that your business? Isn't that you're a Christian? Our business as a Christian is to tell other people about Jesus. Our business as a Christian is to overcome this world. Our business as a Christian is to win our battles. God is speaking to your heart as she's playing. You just keep, as I'm talking, you just come. You just come. Say, preacher, I want to give God. I want God to have my hand. I want him to use me. I want him to show me what I need to do. I'm his. I'm his. I'm his. The, the business is his business. The battle, they're all his. They're all his. You're his. She's playing. Come on. We'll let her finish. Come on. Come on. God, speak your heart. Come on. I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you. This story is, is got to be God-inspired because it's inspired me every time I've read it and preached it. And I want it to be true in my life. I don't want it to be a sermon. I want it to be my lifestyle. I want it to be the principles that I practice in my life. David, when nobody was watching, killed a lion and a bear because his job was so important. He wasn't doing it for his dad. He was doing it for his God. Help me, God, to see what I'm doing, whether anybody sees me or not. I'm doing this for you. So I ought to give my best. I ought to do my best. If David would do that when nobody was around for dumb sheep, then how much more should I be doing for you, my God, as he did help me and help everyone that made a decision? I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen.